Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Real Talk. Today we are clearly in a different setting. I am in Las Vegas. I had some real estate shoots out here and I was supposed to have um, five shoots in two days, but the one that I was supposed to have right now ended up getting canceled because it's overcast. And that's what the topic is today. That's what kind of sparked this idea for me to film today is the fact that the lighting isn't always good when it's sunny out. And that doesn't click a lot of the times with people that aren't actually into photography, but it's the truth. So I was talking to the client and for real estate, it makes sense that we weren't going to shoot today. But a lot of the times it doesn't make sense to not shoot because it's cloudy. As long as it's not raining, especially if you're shooting with something that has a subject in frame, it can actually look better. And real estate's different in the way that you want all of those vibrant colors. And to get those vibrant colors, you kind of do need the sun out. You want the sun to be hitting those greens. You want the sun to be hitting in this area, like the red rock. You want that vibrant red. You want the vibrant green for the grass or the trees, wherever that may be. Or you might want that hard sunlight coming in um, through the window so you get those nice shadows coming into the house, which I personally like. Not everyone's crazy about it, but I think it's a cool effect whenever you can have, the, have that different light coming in, especially if you're doing a day and a night shoot. But whenever it's cloudy outside, your lighting actually is better than you would think it is. And I didn't realize this at first. A lot of people don't realize it if they don't actually do this for a living. But whenever it's overcast, it's almost like there's a big soft box in the sky. I am a big advocate of not necessarily needing a light. And I don't own much lighting equipment at all. The only lighting equipment that I have are two light bars. I ended up actually giving away my soft boxes with my decent lights that I had whenever I moved because I never used them. In the near future I'll probably get a light. I think I'm going to get an Aperture 200D I think it is. And kind of a cool idea that I have is I'm going to mount it on my wall on a swivel. So I'll be able to move it around to use it to film my reels. Something that I've had problems with with filming these reels is that I can't film them at night. I can only film them during the day because I use my window as my light. So for all these podcasts and all of the reels, as you can tell, they've been filmed during the day because I don't want to just use the normal lamp that I have at my house and the light bars are a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to get a 200D to have a soft box on my face, but that's only because I want to change it up. I want a little bit of a different look, but by no means do you need a light. By no means should you think that not having a light should hold you back from creating your content because it's not necessary. I seriously can't tell you the last time I used a light and that is just how I've kind of started my career. I do video pretty much every day in my life and um, whenever I shoot video, especially starting out, I just use what I have. I use the interior lighting, I figure it out. I use the exterior lighting, which like I mentioned before, you have a big soft box in the sky when it's cloudy like it is now. You can see that the lighting on my skin, lighting on my face is pretty even for that reason right there, for the reason that it is cloudy. So we have even lighting all over. We don't have any hard shadows, which a lot of people don't end up liking. So when it comes to lighting, there is a fine line between it. There's a, there's a line where maybe the production's a high budget production that you do need lighting, but at the same time, you can always work with it. There are other factors that you can use to your advantage to try to avoid having lighting. A reason that I don't necessarily like taking it to a lot of my shoots is because I am all about efficiency. When it comes to efficiency, you need to be in and out as fast as possible. One of the best compliments I ever got on a shoot was that the client told me that they enjoyed me directing them because I don't bullshit at all. I get straight to the point, tell them what I need them to do. I get them in and out as fast as I possibly can. 
that is a really valuable skill to have because a lot of people like to just dilly dally and they like to just uh, really sit there and take their time and small talk but whenever you're with these clients who have other places to be whenever you're with these clients have other things to do it works to your advantage if you just get them in and out and get what you need out of them as soon as you possibly can I think that not bringing lighting onto set eliminates I would say probably like 45 minutes to an hour of setup and breakdown because say you bring in a big light with a C stand and you have a big softbox that you have to set up if you're just doing a normal interview you can probably find somewhere in the house to do it so this is me talking from like a real estate perspective a lot of these agents have places to be they have to go see their clients and the top thing on their priority list isn't necessarily you getting out there and making this video for them it's become more of a priority recently just because people need to put out their own content but it's not that big of a deal. So whenever you pitch them and you get them to buy into one of these different ideas, you need to make it worth it for them. You need to make it time efficient. You can't take up a whole half of their day and a way that you can eliminate that time is not bringing a light. So alternatives to not bringing a light is how I film these reels. Go up against the window, have that sunlight coming in lighting them you don't want to have their back against the window you don't want to have them the background washed out which means that they will probably be underexposed and just not look good another tip that I would have is if the hard sunlight is coming in use that as your background don't have their back completely be washed out to a window but it say there's some nice light spilling onto the couch but there's not necessarily a window in the back the window might still be on the side use that as your background it'll add a lot of a lot of depth and it'll help you get the best product that you possibly can and another tip is if there is that hard sunlight and your only option is to use a window as your light put the shades down I have filmed some podcasts with the shades up some with the shades down you can't really tell a difference if there's a hard sunlight coming in I don't always like it I don't want to have that shadow on my face I don't want to have that hard light coming in so that it looks like there's this weird effect on my face so put the shade down there's still light that comes through as long as they're not blackout curtains which usually they're not and there's still light that'll be pouring in if it's a super sunny day you can't necessarily block it all out so that's what it comes down to is using your surroundings don't think that you need this crazy light setup don't think that you need this beautiful set to make this happen because look at me I'm literally sitting in this like gym parking lot kind of a cool background it's like a desert kind of feel and I mean I'm filming this I have my nice audio I have my nice camera and that's what we're doing so whenever you are outside don't be discouraged by a day that it's cloudy out whenever you're inside figure it out find some nice lighting find some soft lighting use a window use it to your advantage realize that you have this camera for a reason if you're shooting on any kind of mirrorless camera and you have a nice lens you can make it work I shot a hat ad for Vondre brand hats and we didn't bring any lighting and we needed to shoot an interview and we also need to shoot b-roll of Ben the owner all around the office or all around the fabric manufacturer as you can imagine the lighting in a fabric factory sucks and we had to just make it work we found a good spot where he would be underneath a light so it would be lighting him evenly and we compensated with our cameras you might have to bump that ISO up a little bit more that's okay these cameras are nice these days you can get away with a lot more than you ever could we also just knew what we had to do to get the different angles if there's a shadow on his face and you're shooting with a B cam shoot on the opposite side of his face work around it you can make it work you can even in the color grade do different things to make it look like the lighting was a little bit better Whenever the client was talking about canceling the shoot today, I kept coming back to the fact that we could pop those greens. Whenever you become more skilled in color grading, you can get away with more things than you would think you could. 
and you have to be able to communicate this with the client that doesn't necessarily know how it all works. As you know, if you know anything about color grading, whether no matter what you use, you can isolate the greens, you can saturate the greens. In video, you can't necessarily do a sky replacement, but maybe you can pop the blues to make the sky look a little bit more blue. Maybe you can just get different angles that you don't see the sky as much. You can, you can use it to your advantage. You can still pull off these great things without necessarily canceling your entire day. So just learn your skills. Learn the different basics that will help you work through these problems. You don't need to buy these expensive lights to get your videos looking good and you can accomplish a whole lot without amazing gear. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Peace out, guys.